I don't see enough of this on YouTube. Um, as far as from what I've seen, the, you know, there's a million and one videos that document how a dual clutch transmission works. But I would like to show you the power flow. Um, like a lot of the times you'll watch a video and yeah, it makes sense. You got two input shafts and all that other stuff. Well, if you want to like, this will be a good example of how it works specifically in a Nissan GTR. Um, many other DCT systems are similar to this, but I want to document the power flow and also how the all wheel drive system works to give you an idea, just to show you, this will show you like physically what's going on, um, as to, you know, someone can explain it all day, but when you actually see it. It can give you a better example of what's going on. So to show you the power flow through all-wheel drive GTR transmission, you have your input right here. So power comes in through here, through the torque tube from the engine. So this is running at engine speed. Okay, power comes in. That is the input shaft of the transmission right there. That comes in. This comes in right here. And this goes into the clutch basket right here. Okay, and inside of here, you can see those are the splines there. And then there's this inner surface here. This is uh, your sealing surface and your hydraulic surface. So you have um, fluid pressure through these holes here and these solenoids here, and it will apply pressure through these cavities to either activate the A clutch pack or the B clutch pack. And then here is, the, when the power comes in, it spins this whole drum entirely. And then inside of here, the outer input here and the inner input here they spin independent of the outer basket they are attached to the clutch packs and then this gear here is the pump shaft which gives you know obviously your hydraulic oil to control all of these said parts of the transmission so to kind of explain the ecu sends an electrical signal which will activate one of these clutch pack or clutch solenoids so then that will send oil uh, through up into this, the kind of input hub sealing surface. And then that will in turn flood one of these clutches. And there's like a piston inside of here. Um, basically that piston will uh, force these, um, what would you call it, synthetic um, discs or, or, I mean, it's some kind of a, uh, automatic transmission style clutch. It clamps these together, which then will lock one of these input shafts to, uh, the outer basket. So power will come in and the clutch will be applied and then power will come out here. And in a GTR, the inner input shaft, this is going to be your first gear, your third gear, your fifth and your reverse. And then the outer one will be your uh, second, fourth, and sixth. Okay, so you get the idea of how power comes in and then you get how there's an A clutch and a B clutch, um, you know, how your standard dual clutch transmissions work. Okay, so moving on from how power comes in, you now have the gear set. Now, power comes in through this side of the gear set, um, or this is the front of the gear set. Now, it's going to be hard for me to show you how the inner input works because I don't have something to interface with that at this point in time. I do have a spare clutch basket I can put on there and rotate, but uh, for the demonstration's sake, uh, the easiest way about this is to show you on the even number gears. So, when... Before the computer commands it to go into a gear, let's say you are going like 10 miles an hour, just normal driving, the transmission is going to go into second gear. So we're going to kind of sort of ignore the fact that first gear is already spinning, but we'll, uh, I will explain how that works with this. So in a manual transmission, you have basically... Your input, and in the GTR, there's actually kind of two outputs. This whole shaft is an output because this front goes to this gear here, which goes to your, uh, it's like a front output gear, and then this goes to your ETS, which I will get to in a moment. So, power comes in through here. We're going to go with the B, the B clutch. So, when... You can see right now, this would be like if the transmission was in 
uh, kind of neutral, like uh, as if the even number gear clutch isn't pre-selecting anything. So when the transmission's in first gear, it will go to pre-select second gear, okay? So on this shaft, this gear here is second gear, and then you have third gear, and then here, or second gear, fourth gear, and then the front is sixth gear. So the way that this, the power flow would work is when the ECU tells it to pre-select second, this a actuator on your valve body right here, basically like that, a solenoid will open uh, one of these guys here, and it will send hydraulic fluid to this piston, and it will, let's say, do that to select second or fourth. So it's hard to, in a normal manual transmission, you would have like third and fourth. Well, obviously, because this is a dual clutch, it has to come off of one clutch or come off of one clutch, go into another, but it comes out of one gear and goes onto another. And that's why you have even numbers and odd numbers. There's plenty of YouTube videos that document how dual clutches work and how the changeovers work. Um, there's a lot, a lot there to it. So I'm going to move this slider over to pre-select uh, second gear. So I might actually have to set the camera down for this. Okay, that is second gear pre-selected. So normally a hydraulic uh, unit in the valve body would move this over. Okay, so now this is pre-selected, but it doesn't mean that it's in gear because the clutch doesn't necessarily have pressure going to it. But the way that the ECU will work, it will command basically the A solenoid to close and then the B circuit to open. So that will release the tension off of the A clutch and then it will transition over to the B. That's all computer programming and that's all like... That can all be adjusted uh, through the tune slightly. Some people will disagree with that, but to some extent you can change the timing on the changeover through the access port through touch points. And then there's some stuff with capacity you can also change and that, that can also play into touch points and, and, and stuff like that. But that's, that's really outside of the scope of this video. Um, but to show you power flow, so when you now... Now, let's say the ECU turns on the, the second gear clutch or the B clutch. It will turn this shaft. So then this shaft will now, power will come through and then go down to here. And because this slider, this, this part here, swiggling part, this is locked to the shaft. So this, no matter what, will spin with this. And um, you now lock the rotating gear, which is normally freewheeling, to the shaft so power no matter what has to go through here into this gear and then it goes and transfers power to this shaft now here's the slightly more complex thing about this transmission so this is an output here so your power comes out here comes into this gear here and then it drives the front output which drives the ets unit right there which is essentially a hydraulically controlled clutch that will or an electromagnetically controlled um, clutch pack when that receives more power it will cause the fluid internally to um it's kind of like the shocks like an adjustable damper or like a mag ride damper when the electromagnet energizes that fluid that will resist rotation between the clutch plates inside of the differential okay so that's a quick dirty explanation to how the ets works and functions but that's what that's what gives you your front output okay and then in a gtr so i told you that this whole shaft is an output shaft um this gear back here this is called a drop gear and there's a certain power level i think it's a thousand foot pounds of torque or 1200 foot pounds of torque um this is now a weak point and you have to go to a billet gear. Uh, this customer never broke anything, but we were getting close to the limitation of his first gear. So this gear here is a lot larger than the factory unit. Um, and 
With that, it also replaced the uh, drive part of that, the uh, inner input shaft. I actually ran into an issue where the bearing that rides right here, because the PPG input's oversized, uh, this shaft would not slip over the input shaft. So that was a, went on a goose chase, spent like three hours on the phone to try to find out where I could get that from. Ended up getting it, but yeah, so the way that the GTR, the power flow comes out through this lower shaft, comes through this drop gear into that gear right here. And if I'll show you, when I rotate this gear, it rotates the pinion gear, which nearly went for a ride off the table. People who know me know that that's some typical thing that would happen with me. <laughs> but anyway, that's how your drop gears work. Uh, some companies offer a uh, different ratio drop gear so that you can run a big tire on your GTR. So you can run a 30 something inch slick in the back. It might be taller than that. It might be a 33. Um, but then, but your normal, you would have your 240. You'd have your normal front and rear tire. They're really close to the same size. This allows the drop gear, the billet drop gear lets you run basically a certain diameter size larger. Um, and a lot of the big teams, you just kind of want to probably go with what they recommend on that. Um, I don't personally know a ton about that. Just learned a little bit from some podcast stuff. So anyway, that's my documenting how power flow works through a GTR transmission. And I will come back over here and show you. This is that ETS. It's splined inside of here. And then when the electromagnet inside, um, basically this wire comes in here. There's an electromagnet here. It will lock up and then send power out the front through the front engine drive shaft. And the thing with that is it is a viscous fluid inside of here with multiple clutches. It's kind of like this, where even technically, even when the... A clutch is not engaged at all there's still like I'm gonna say maybe one or half a foot pound of torque being transferred through because it's never you're never gonna end up with a perfect like hydroplane action between the friction and the steel so uh, power flow through there's gonna be a little bit of hang up that's why this transmission does use synchros um, it is not perfect in that aspect but just showing how um, the ETS, that's why when you, uh, some people have burned this up when they have incorrect sized tires because you have a, let's say a 3% differential in speed RPM wise at the tire rear to front, but then that's multiplied because you have, let's say like a 342 rear end gear in a GTR. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to guesstimate that's what it is. Uh, you have a certain amount of gear ratio change between the drop gear, your rear end gear, and your front diff gear. And when, I mean, it's 342 to one, so every three and whatever times this spins, it spins the tires once. So if you have, you know, a 3% difference in tire height, that could be like, like 15 RPM differential, which turns into 50 RPM. That's that's a very crude way of putting it, but the further up in the chain you go, the more of a differential in speed there is. And with the ETS unit, um, that, that will cause that to overheat because your 15 RPM difference at, you know, let's say 60 miles an hour is now like 80 to 150 RPM there. That can be bad. And that isn't like 15% to 80 RPM or whatever, or like three times, 3.42 times 15 does not equal like 80. I, and that's very rough math there. But, you know, if you were going, let's say really fast in one of these cars, that just exponentially increases. So that's showing you kind of and documenting how GTR all wheel drive works and how kind of how manual transmission works. There's plenty of videos showing how that all works and stuff. Um, I will do another video or I will finish this wrapping up showing how it all kind of comes together. There's a lot to these. Um, but yeah, anyways, that's it.